this video we are going to cover survival analysis uh, this topic will cover in four videos in first video in this video like we will talk about the in definition of survival analysis and some more thing about censoring and then in the next three video we will cover the main uh, application for the survival analysis what what are basically require when we work it First of all, what is survival analysis is basically it is the the regression modeling when we want to model the time to fail, failure or the time to event. Now, what is this time? I mean, for, what is the time for the failure or the event? He said, for example, we want to observe the time to death of the patient with certain disease. So let's suppose the death is our event and a person is uh, uh, enduring certain disease. So we will observe that uh, when will the death will occur for the certain patient uh, enduring the certain disease. So we have two variable like the time variable and the um, and death or the survival, uh, survival uh, event uh, and the duration from any onset of the study. Or for example, remission duration for certain disease in clinical trial or for example, the failure times of certain manufactured products, you have the product and you are observing the time, the duration that it will uh, become failed for the use. And for example, the lifetime of elderly in particular social program, they are enrolled in any social program to increase your life, but uh, eventually the elderly will die. So we are observing that how long will it take for a social program which increases the life of the patient. So these are the example that we are working with a duration uh, uh, variable and then event variable. But eventually it can happen that uh, over the observation, uh, although our outcome is the death, but it may be uh, over the follow up of the time, it may happen that some of the we may lose some of the patient we may lose some of the uh, some of the uh, some of the observation so uh, the losing can be done uh, can be a happen uh, for any reason for example loss to follow up or the patient die for any other disease for example i uh, we are interested in finding the um, survival of a patient from the lung cancer or say death of the patient from the lung cancer but the patient died due to let's suppose for uh, COVID-19 so dying from the COVID-19 was not my event but dying from the lung cancer was my event so I will not include that observation in my study such kind of observation when it happened when the when your observation did not achieve the certain events of the data that is called a censoring observation that is first of all either incomplete observation of the survival time like we are we lost to follow up that observation and um, we don't know whether the outcome of interest occur or not maybe uh, the patient referred to any other hospital or patient actually uh, uh, cut down uh, its uh, treatment in uh, with certain uh, with uh, with certain hospital. So uh, that will happen. That uh, incomplete observation occur in the survival time, or maybe like we said, event of interest did not occur. In the sense, like we gave the example, we were we were interested in finding out death from lung cancer, but the patient died for any other reason maybe died from the accident from the car accident so that observation will become the sensor observation so there are two type of censoring one is right censoring another one is left censoring right century censoring imply that that we are censoring the observation from the right side that is we start the study and uh, this is a Lexis diagram. We can uh, illustrate, uh, understand the right sensory using this illustration. The Lexis diagram actually uh, one of the kind that we start the study and we observe the event. Let's suppose that X is an event we are interested in. So for the observation number one, uh, we, uh, we start the study and uh, the event start here 
uh, but the patient did not observe that event. Maybe we lost to follow up to patient number two and the patient number three. So uh, we lost to follow up to two, uh, two, two things. We only know that the patient were with us till 250, let's suppose day, 240 days or 150 days. So event may occur, but we do not know. Event may occur to the patient, the same event like dying from the lung cancer, dying from the lung cancer, but we do not know. So these two observations will become the, uh, uh, will become uh, will become uh, the sensor observation. Maybe this observation, this patient uh, was lost to follow up. Maybe this patient was dropped out from the study. Or there is one more reason, like the patient uh, uh, was uh, the study was terminated, and the event of the interest occurred after the time. So, or maybe there is one more reason that the event of interest did not occur. So for Using this diagram, only this of this was the observation. This was a patient who encountered the event within the study period. So, this kind of the data, this kind of the censoring, is called as the right censoring. Similarly, we have the left sensing also that the event of the just already occur uh, before the start of the study. For example. We started the study in uh, 1992. And uh, the, our study ended up at the 2001. So this is the frame uh, for, the, for our event. Maybe we are also observing the right censoring. At this moment, we are interested in the uh, right censoring. Let's suppose this is the study of the coronary heart, uh, heart disease event. And we are observing the death from the CSD. So what happened that maybe the patient died before 1992. Like look at here, this patient died. This was the event. This patient died in 1990. This patient died in 1991. But our start, uh, study started in 1992. So what will happen? These two patients will become the left sensor observation. They died before the study start, although these were our observation of interest. They also died because, because of the uh, coronary, uh, coronary heart disease, but they, uh, they died before our study. So that kind of sensing is called as uh, left censoring or it occur the left, left side of the data observation with, before the study starts. So what is survival function basically? Survival function basic, uh, uh, in this uh, three lecture, we are going to cover the right censoring observation means uh, the study starts and after the study, we are observing the sensor, sensor observation. The reason can be any, let's say the loss of follow up, termination from the study or any reason. But what is survival function basically? First of all, we uh, we denote using S uh, using S of T. S is the survival time, survival function, and T is the time. Time means, for example, in year, zero year, one year, two year, three year. So this one is S of zero, starting from the zero year. This one is S of one, starting from from for uh, I mean the value of survival function at one year. S of two, the value of survival function at the two year, and S of three, the value of survival function at third year. This is a kind of graph we obtain when we plot the survival function. We are going to discuss in our next video how to make this graph. So S of T is equal to P of T more than A. It is always the uh, cumulative for probability in a sense that, uh, first of all, whatever the survival function occur, we always interpret as more than time. For example, if we see, let's suppose at two years, at this this is a survival function put from the gene A. This is a survival function from the gene B, from the gene B, the red line. So here, the gene A, let's suppose at two year, let's suppose this is for the 90 year, uh, nine, 0 0.90. The survival function is 90%. So we will say from the gene A, 90% of the patients survive within two, more than for more than two year. 90% of the patient survive for more than a year. While when we look at here, the two year, it is approximately 50 year, 
we will say that the 50% patients survive for more than two years. So we are talking about, although our outcome is the death, but we are talking about the survival function. For uh, looking at the, uh, looking at the uh, uh, at the death, we have to make the hazard function, which is not covering in this one. So survival function. What are the properties for the survival function? It is always a smooth curve, smooth decreasing curve, and the baseline survival. That is the time zero. At time zero, the survival is always hundred percent. We assume. Then after the uh, observation occur, the death occur, and the censoring occur, we observe. Uh, we observe the survival of the patient. So this is always a decreasing function and it has a cumulative survival function. Like for example, by one year, let's suppose for the green, we have the 99% survival, but by the two year, we have the 90% survival, which is the cumulative property. So by three year, we have the 52% uh, uh, survival. Survival, 52% patients survive by three year for the gene A. While for the gene B, we have, let's suppose, 80% survival, like 80% patients survive by one year, 50% uh, patients survive for uh, by two year, and let's say less for 30% patients survive for uh, for the by three by three years. So, what are the goal for survival analysis? Basically, uh, first of all, to describe the survival function, which we which we can uh, achieve by using the Kaplan Weir plots. And then we can also compare the survival curve like we, uh, we discussed in the last slide, comparing the survival of the gene A and the gene B. This can be done in the log run test. And uh, we can also assess the relationship between the survival time and our set of independent variable. This can be achieved by Cox equation model. These three concepts will be covered in our next video. Till now, this is about the descriptive of the survival and the about the censoring.